Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we have a very easy task in front of us today uh, to solve the system of two linear equations with uh, two variables. Basically, it looks like this in general. Um, I'm sure um, you would have absolutely no problems to solve any particular system like this um, with real numbers, uh, real solutions, etc. Uh, there are different methods to do it, like elimination, for instance, or substitution or whatever. Um, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. I would like to approach this from the matrix perspective. Because this is exactly how systems with 3, 4, 25 um, variables are solved. This is how computers actually are solving systems of linear equations, etc. So I'm going to use the theory of matrix and terminology um, of, matrix, of matrices and uh, the theory of determinants, matrix determinants, which we have already uh, discussed before. So. Let me first try to solve this thing, and uh, I'll, I'll solve it exactly the same way as probably everybody else does. Um, for instance, I presume that uh, these two coefficients are not simultaneously equal to zero, because otherwise we would have a system of two equations with one variable, which is no good, obviously. Um, so let's consider a12, for instance, not equal to zero, so I will be able to solve um, this uh, equation uh, for x2 if uh, I know, for instance, the value of x1. And uh, to get the value of x1, I'll just eliminate x2 by multiplying this by a22, this multiplied by a12, and I will subtract from this, I will subtract this. So if I will do this, my x2 will cancel out, right? One a12 and a22 with x2 and here I will have x22 and a12 which is the same thing so if I will subtract the results of multiplication of each of these equations uh, I will eliminate x2 so what I will have is on the left I will have b1 times a22 minus b2 times a12 equals and on the right, I will have a11 times a22 minus a21 times a12 x1. So the solution is Very simple. Okay, now, it's very easy to derive this formula. What's more interesting is to start interpreting this formula from the um, position of matrices and their determinant. So, let's use the matrix of the coefficients. This is matrix of the coefficients. A11, A22, A12, A21, A22. These are coefficients. Now, what is in the denominator? Well, according to our definition, determinant of this matrix is main diagonal minus the alternate diagonal. Which is exactly the denominator here. Now, the numerator, well, it looks, well, kind of similar to this, but we don't have the same coefficients here. So what is the numerator? Well, here's what I suggest. Let's take and the first row, uh, the first column, sorry, in the matrix A, replace with three coefficients.
and let's call it a1 one because we have substituted the first column where x1 actually is so all the coefficients which are for x1 i, I, I substituted with the free with the, with the free elements of, of these equations now now as you see the numerator is determinant of this matrix so determinant of matrix a1 is again main diagonal which is b1 times a22 minus alternate diagonal b2 times a12 which is numerator now let's do a very similar thing let's eliminate x1 for instance and get x2 or alternatively we can just use the first equation and since we know the value of x1 we can find the value of x2 whatever is easier well let's do it this way uh, and and by the way using these i can say that x1 is equal to determinant of matrix a1 divided by determinant of main matrix of the coefficients a all right now now let me wipe out this and let's solve it for x2 i would prefer actually to do exactly the same way as i did when i was solving for x1 i'll just eliminate um, x1. Now to eliminate x1 I will multiply this by a21 and this I will multiply by a11 and subtract. From this I subtract this. In which case my x1 would be cancelled out and what remains is b1 times a21 minus b2 times a11 that's on the left on the right again x1 will cancel out right because a11 a21 and a21 a11 it was a minus sign okay so with the plus i will have a12 a21 minus a22 a11 x2 and from here x2 is equal to well um, if you don't mind I will change the sign the signs in both cases because this actually looks like exactly the determinant of the matrix A but with a minus sign so I actually probably should have subtract this from this not this from this it doesn't really matter so let me change the signs here so I will have plus here minus here plus here and minus here all right that's same thing so x2 is equal to in the numerator i will have uh, b2 a11 minus b1 a21 and denominator is a11 a22 minus a12 a21 well lo and behold in the denominator i have exactly the same determinant of matrix A. Now here, what do I have here? Well, let me just use the same approach but slightly different here. So if I I used to have my matrix of the coefficients like this. Now if you remember to get the value of x1 I had to substitute the first column with the three members. Now for x2, if you notice, I can substitute the second column with three members. And determinant of this matrix, call it a2. The second column is substituted with, with, with three members, right? And now determinant is a11 times b2, a11 times b2 minus b1 times a21, b1 times a so as you see x2 similarly to x1 actually is equal to 
determinant of matrix A2 divided by determinant of matrix A. So, what we have done here, we have come up with a very general way to express solutions of our system of two equations with, with two uh, variables, linear equations. What you have to do is, first of all, the denominator for all of these solutions is exactly the same. It's denominator of the, uh, it's determinant of the matrix of the coefficients. And the numerator for the first one, you have to substitute in this matrix the first column with three members and get the determinant. For the second um, uh, unknown variable, you have to substitute the second column in the matrix of the coefficients with the free members and get the determinant. And that's how basically you get the solutions. Now, what's interesting is that exactly the same formulas exist for three uh, variables, uh, three equations with three variables, four, 25, whatever. The formulas are exactly the same. So you have the matrix of the coefficients, you substitute the first column with the free members and uh, get the determinant. Divide by the determinant of the matrix of, of the coefficients, you will get the first uh, variable. Substitute the second uh, column with free members, get determinant, divide by the determinant of the uh, uh, coefficients, and you will get the second variable, etc., etc., etc. Now, I will do exactly uh, these types of calculations in the next lecture for three variables and three equations. And again, I will just solve these equations and come up eventually with the same formula. And uh, I'm just leaving it just as, as an information that the same formulas actually exist for n linear equations with n, uh, with, with n variables. But this is something which people usually learn in uh, higher schools, like colleges, whatever. Um, okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, I think there is a very interesting lesson I would like you to uh, basically um, uh, learn from this. You see, there are many different things in, in, in mathematics and they are seemingly non-related to each other. But then, as soon as you come up to a little bit higher level and look at these problems from that higher level, you see the commonality. Like, for instance, there is a commonality of the solutions of any linear uh, equation, system of linear equations. I mean, the formulas are exactly the same. Now, you cannot say it without going to this upper layer of looking at this through the theory of matrices and determinants. If you just see the system, if you're trying to, to solve it, you see many different ways how to solve it, many particular approaches, but you don't see this generalized view, which basically tells you that lots of different things are really related to each other, but to see this relation, you have to really be on the top of it, as everything else in the world. I mean, everything is related, but to know how the relation actually is um, accomplished, how, it's, how, how these links are organized, you really have to look at this from the top. Okay, that's a little lesson which I wanted to, you to know. All right, um, I invite you to go to unizor.com website, look at the notes to this lecture, just to make sure that you are better prepared. And again, don't forget that the site uh, allows for registered students to, to take exams, which is very, very important. Uh, exams are not available for all the lectures, but I'm working on it. So thanks very much again and good luck.